Yeah, we're in the building, ready to get active. Everyone hates Tesla. Big man bets on Tesla. Let's get started and jump right into the video, guys. Between two waves is what Elon calls it, right? You have the Model 3 and the Model Y, which is largely saturated. The next big catalyst is going to be the affordable car. Unfortunately, that comes in, what, H225. So he doesn't think about things on a day-to-day -day or month-to-month -month period, as you probably know very well. He's looking at things from a year's, if not decades, perspective. Woo, Tesla and especially Elon leading the helm, but everybody over there and the staff included, we're usually looking at Tesla for decades ahead, right? So when you turn on the financial media, guys, they're going from quarter to quarter, month to month, year to date, and year to year, and whatever crazy metrics, even today. It might be like the end of closing day, two days ago, three days ago. You never know with these guys, man. They're always pushing a time frame in order to push a narrative. But we're just focused on decades, all right? We're just focused on great companies, right? I don't mind the price of being 165. It means buying opportunity. So we're just in between this period of two lulls. Eventually, we'll get this catalyst with this vehicle that'll come out. And there's some long-term tectonic things that people just aren't talking about, which folks like me will start writing reports about and get folks interested eventually. So such as? Energy storage. Nobody's talking about this. Uh, this is a trillions of dollars of opportunity. Problem is, it's like decades away potentially. These guys have 15% market share in this business, um, and the profitability is higher than the profitability of cars. Um, and then, of course, autonomy, right? There's just a lot of negative. Well, slow your roll. He's hitting us with too many gems, too much vibranium. So, for most people, they don't know anything about the actual gigafactories, right? So they don't know anything about the mega factories. Giga factories, they know. That's where we produce the cars. But there's a whole segment that's not even being evaluated right now in the valuation of Tesla, which is great for us and which is great for people like me. It is the batteries, the mega factory. Let me show you guys what the mega factory is in case you don't know. Come on, man. We're about to be delivering heavy hitting product. I'm talking about mega packs, talking about energy that powers the grid, powers nations. We're talking about 50% margins and up. We're winning, guys. I don't know if you ever knew about this, but this is what we're bringing to the marketplace. And the factory is expanding, it has already been built in Cali. We're building another one out in Shanghai, and then we're going to be building possibly something out in Mexico. We're not to sure yet on the details, but Shanghai, they build our factories the fastest. So that's where we're at. Now, let me go back here. The largest utility scale battery factory in North America. And that's just a building that was previously last time I checked from Sears. Or some distributor. I can't remember who it was. But it was just a, some distributor, retailer. I can't quite remember. But we turned that factory. And we made it the largest utility-scale battery factory in North America. We're building batteries, batteries from the ground up, guys. So just, just in case you guys didn't know. And look up the margins. It's 50% plus. All right? And we're building lithium-ion down in Texas. Let me, let me get back to what he's talking about. Because we're on FSD now. So these things, stock analysis and et cetera, they know nothing about. Most investors know nothing about it. Let's continue. You guys still talking ET talk. <laughs> you still talking alien talk. You talking about the EVs, 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 when there's so much more going on with the company. Negativity and autonomy today. If you guys ever used FSD, I think it's a pretty amazing product. I think it's the most amazing product I've used since the iPhone. We're, we're finally going to get this version 12 this year, which could get the attach rate up. The problem is not even enough people have tested this thing. Once you have people test it and the pricing needs to come down, that can change things dramatically. People look at it as a software stock, not just an auto company. Morgan Stanley just released a new note on Tesla. And let me say that it's going to blow the doors off your investment strategy. So if people had been selling Tesla to buy NVIDIA, you think the best thing to do is to invert that because you've probably made a lot of money on NVDA. 
Well, let's be clear. So I'm long NVIDIA and I'm loading up here on Tesla, but I think you're absolutely right. When you look at NVIDIA, it's three times the size of Tesla from a market cap perspective. It's now the third largest, but the parabolic move in NVIDIA, if you look at a chart here, just since January, up 50%, and this yeah. is not up 50% from where it was cut in half in 2022, this is substantial. This was a, nearly a trillion dollar company. Now to be up where it is, I think it can go from 750, it has to back and fill. See, guys, once again, this is what I'm talking about. If you listen to them have conversations, this is where I like to skip past a lot what they talk about because they're not actually talking about the fundamentals of the company. They're talking about trading, all right? And so if you're getting into the stock market, do they trade ups and downs and try to time the market and then you got a stock price for what year and what month is going to hit this price, then you can go ahead and enjoy this game with them. But this is not the game we're playing. Man, I'm super grateful for YouTube. Because only through YouTube have we been able to actually get people who emphasize on the technology, emphasize on the fundamentals, emphasize on actually the company and how it works. Like we literally have YouTubers out here just combing through the financial spreadsheet, We're just combing through all the expenditures, like combing through the margins of the business, making projections predicted upon the production and the growth and scaling. Like these guys are not talking about that. All these guys are talking about you yeah, in the video and then I'm going to exit and then I'm going to buy out of the video and I'm going to buy back in the desolate. And then in the next quarter, there's going to be a dip and a pullback. Like, what are they talking about? They're not even talking about the company. They're talking about specifically what the markets are doing. And remember, we're placing an investment into the company. We're placing an investment into products and income, into technology, into a process. Revolutionary technology is being built and is also being developed right before our eyes. FSD, energy, storage, this is being built, minus the EVs. The charging network, like literally all the gas stations in the United States of America for EVs, the equivalent, going into the future, majority of the share will be market to Tesla and gave to Tesla because they built out the infrastructure. Not only did they already build out the infrastructure, they have the best process to building out the superchargers because they have the best factory and the best process to build a factory. They build factories the fastest in comparison to all other companies, not just automaking companies, any factory that needs to be built, even from construction companies that build factories very good. So once again, once you listen to these guys, they're going to be talking about last month, last year, Starting of the year, starting of the quarter, last quarter, this quarter, that quarter. And it's not the conversation that we're trying to have, right? Because none of these guys are actually talking about Tesla. You don't even get to know Tesla. The only thing you're getting to know is when it was this price, when this price went down and when that price went up and when I bought at this price and I bought back into this other thing. Skip all of that. I don't want to hear you. I think next month. Most Tesla investors and analysts predict that the automaker will become the most profitable car company this year. While this is possible, there is no denying that it won't be so easy for Tesla considering that more EVV models are being released, and many of them could be strong rivals for Tesla. Although most Tesla bulls maintain that the car company is at a stable point in terms of its growth and valuation, some others may argue that Tesla's valuation isn't as astronomical as it seems on the surface. What will the story be for Tesla? And what is this new Morgan Stanley note all about? Let's dive into the details. I'm looking at another stock, which I don't know that you own, but I'm sure you have an opinion on, like seemingly everybody does, and it's Tesla, which in front of me today is down 5% today. It's down 8% this week. See, are you guys finding a trend every time that we listen to these guys? They're talking about how it's down 5%, 8%, 9%, and they're really never talking about fundamentals. It's usually the correspondent or someone else who's just coming in and saying that, oh, they have batteries, uh, the margins are good on that, they're expanding market share, China's really going to take off, the competition's coming, and then that's it. That's, a, that's the only information that we're getting from these guys. This is why I said, man, if you got these guys running in your household and you have them on the TV and you're like getting a coffee and thinking that you're learning something, you're learning literally nothing. You don't know anything about what's going on with the company. Like, those are very small talking points.
but let's hear him. I, I want this to be really emphasized so you guys can get it and understand. Listen to these people talk. You know, the chart looks terrible. The stock looks broken. How would you assess it for those who were used to it almost going in one direction as well? Now, let me stop there, because what I also want to tell you is that the stock looked terrible. The stock looks broken. Let's go to a five year. We're going to take it to a five year trajectory. That's not a lot, guys. Five years is not a lot. All right. He's saying people are losing five years. It's up eight hundred and twenty five percent. Just five years. But it's broken. It's messed up. So a 825% growth of the stock over a five-year period is bad. But let me show you what they're always talking about. They're talking about five days. No, they're talking about one month. It's down 13% in the last month. Oh, man. It's the worst stock alive. It's down the last six months. It's down 30%. It's terrible. Oh my gosh, it's the worst company alive. Year to date, it's down 30%. A year, it's down 10%. Five years, it's up 825%. We don't even have to go five. We went five, we can go four. Back four years ago, it was worth $30. The last time it was around this price was in 2020. So for the last three years, it's been relatively around the same price. But prior to that, it was below $20. But the stock has not been performing. They're not long-term, guys. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about months. They're talking about six months. They're talking about a year to date, and they're talking about a year. They're not talking about anything longer than that. So be careful who you listen to. But I'm, I'm saying if you're a day trader and you're trying to time the market and you think you got a magic crystal ball and you believe in these guys who come up with price targets and sell and buy ratings and then you look at their performance and look at their track record and then it's like all failures. Like they've just been missing. They've gotten it wrong for the longest. Morgan Stanley changed their price target. Morgan Stanley changed their price target. Like why do I care? about what Morgan Stanley's changing their price target to, which is quite funny. They mostly change their price target to the price that the stock is currently on. And prior to that, their projections were long, wrong. Like, don't time the market. Like, people just, he got a suit and he's got glasses. I get it. But he's lost in the barbecue sauce. Yeah, that's great question. Yeah, like get him off the screen. Nah, let's let's skip this. Come on. Special. We we did own Tesla, uh, as I've uh, shared with you in the past. We sold it um, last year, and it, you know I think if it, it's it, we're in a difficult spot for Tesla. If you if you look at uh, the company, it was at a fifty five multiple. Now it's at uh, fifty times uh, earnings, roughly, on street numbers. If you look at the conventional or, or traditional OEMs, they trade before, but between four and six times earnings. And at this point, when you're seeing all auto sales kind of slow down and the traditional OEMs are pulling back on their money losing EV operations, investors now look at it and say, hey, maybe uh, these are bargains here in traditional uh, auto OEM land. And those stocks are doing uh, pretty well. And at the Bro, what is this guy talking about? He's not even talking about anything. Uh, 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 he's not even talking about the underlying businesses or the o o OEMs. Right? Okay, yeah, they stopped producing EVs. Why? Because they were not making profit, of course. So if you try to make a product and you can't make a profit, you stop offering it. It's not a big conspiracy. You just suck at doing it. Though Tesla... Is selling their AVs and outperforming the operating and profit margins of those OEMs who's been so selling, excuse me, traditional cars. They've been underperforming in that. Hence the bailout. You guys remember that? But here goes Studden. Uh, 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 that's how he sounds. 
And at the same time, uh, you know, I think the long term is, you know, still very interesting for EVs. I think the long term we're going to see an EV, uh, EV S curve uh, in terms of replacing traditional ICE cars uh, in the long term. But in the short term, uh, the view or the tide is going out essentially uh, on uh, favorability for EV stocks. And with a multiple differential uh, of base almost 10x for Tesla versus traditional OEMs. So eventually, the nation will adopt EV, but it doesn't matter because the stock is something that you don't you don't want to buy it prior to it increasing. You want to buy it when it does increase because he said it's going to happen but then we have oems who no longer produce evs but evs are coming eventually and and in the short term why are we talking about in the short term now why are we talking about in the short term i think i should just name the channel just long term long term investor and then just have it as that as a name. And then we just talk about something different because I, I quite honestly don't like listening and hearing these guys. Like you have to hear this all the time. Like we're not talking about anything I can deal with because all that is trickery and wizardry. Like nobody knows when the price is going to go up and down and up and down. Nobody can time the market. If that be the case, all these guys would be trillionaires because you can't do that. That's, that's not how the game works. Warren Buffett doesn't even tell you stuff like that. And, and, and the difference is when you hear Warren Buffett talk, you don't hear him talk in the day, month, quarter, the date. He really starts talking about the underlying asset, which is the company, the entity, the business that he's invested in, right? So he really talks about the details and the minutiae of that, why he invested in BYD as an example, right? Why he invests in Alibaba. But he's not talking about the quarterly performance and at year to date and 8%, then nine, then the dip, then the flip, then the PE, EPS and da da da, earnings per share. And like, bro, what are you talking about? All right. Please tell me about the company. Tell me how they're reducing the operating costs. How are they increasing their profitability? Are they flexible to reduce the prices on their products and services? If the market shifts, if interest rates increase, can the company afford to reduce the price due to the increase of interest rates so it costs customers more to purchase the product? If they have that flexibility, that's a flex. That's something, that's a benefit. That's not a bad thing to have that margin, to be able to be flexible in any market condition. That is a great attribute that many companies don't have. OEMs do not have it, Ford, GM, and et cetera. So why aren't we talking about the details? Let's, you know what? Let's go check out the factory. How do they manufacture goods? Are they increasing the products? Effectiveness and efficientness? Are they able to delete errors in a supply chain that are causing problems? Are they able to reduce waste and misuse? This is the minutiae. This is how you dive deep in the details as a long-term investor. Daytime, short-term, cup of joe, watching candlesticks before it go up and down and then it flip. And then you see this, it's up. So that means it got to pull back, but it pull up, but pull back a little bit on $20 per, but the 15 cent. And then it come back in the quarter and then it flip and dip at night. Then it come back and triple X. That's what this guy's talking about. Get a good look at his face. That's what that guy talks about. Let's continue. That's a huge gap. And I think at th this point in time, we expect to see Tesla's multiple continue to uh, continue to fall. I love this line. That Tesla is one of the most recognizable brands, not only in the automotive industry, but on the planet. The automaker offers the longest range. Thank you. What the hell did that guy say on the exit? He didn't even say anything. Then you hear reason come back in. When they, whoever's narrating the video, the guy, he comes back and says, okay, the car is one of the most recognized brand. And then I'm pretty sure he's going to hit us with the Model Y, the best selling car in the planet. Not the best selling EV, but car period in the planet. Like, let's talk about facts, homie. 
but you'll see it dip and then it triple X and then it'll go down. <laughs> Yo, what man? Yeah. Yo, who hired Rumpelstiltskin to come up on the goddamn joints and give that information? Uh, then you see it flip, and then when it dip, then it come back and do a 2x and flip back and pull back to 8%. Wait, excuse me? <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, let me tell you again, all right? What I said is, I said it's going to flip and dip and come back around, then do the 7% dip then come back and pull back a little bit. No. No. No, that's not how that worked, bro. That's like, let's hear reason. Let's hear somebody talk about legitimate factors of why a company should be doing good in the future range of any EVs on the market, and these cars are also some of the safest in the world. Tesla has become the most profitable American automobile company. In 2023, the EDV maker earned $15 billion, and its revenue jumped to a whooping $97 billion, an 18.8% increase from the previous year. Today, I'm going to test these translate. See, so that's some real information that the guys actually provide and that will help us make a good prediction about the company say oh well it's doing fairly well for itself it's an 18.8 percent increase in revenues from the previous year right that's talking about money all right they took away around 19 billion in profit okay around 20 percent. all right that's not too bad let's move forward let's talk about the vehicle selling how much vehicles are we selling wow it's the most profitable car maker Period. Not EV. Car maker. But you know what? We sell more cars, but you make less money. Well. 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 This indicates that despite significant investments made towards achieving green mobility goals, even by other automakers, Tesla managed to remain consistently profitable proving that sustainability models can be commercially successful without sacrificing the company's core objectives. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Tesla Tomorrow. Morgan Stanley's new note, just like some others before it, emphasized on the massiveness of Tesla's AI capabilities as well as the company's future projects. It also emphasized critical aspects such as the AI revolution, labor shortage, and even autonomous driving. Now, we know that Tesla is a big force in the auto industry, but what if investors are ignoring the fact that Tesla could be so much more that we see? What if sometime in the future, Tesla is so valuable that it rivals the big names today? Talk about companies like NVIDIA and Apple. Let's explore a bit, but before we... And that's my biggest emphasis on Tesla as a company. I think that their processes as a company is one of the best. I think it's the most underrated IP, regardless of what they make, guys. Regardless if they're making EVs, regardless if they're making actual supercharged stations, regardless if they're making mega packs, they have a crazy process and a culture that creates a process that makes the process of producing a product and service more effective and efficient. They have an ability to scale a product from version one to version seven very quickly they have a culture from within the company that allows innovation from all levels regardless if you're at the floor a manager or supervisor you're still able to contribute to make a process more easier to delete a process or a step delete it from it the process or the supply chain to make the production more effective and efficient this is something that a lot of companies do not have the ability to do in any industry, let alone something massively complex like a car industry, where you have a big assembly line built out to a particular way. And someone says, hey, why are we doing it this way? That really doesn't make sense. What's your solution? Well, why don't we just cut this process out and this process out and then go from point A straight to C? We don't need B. Oh. Actually, 
That makes sense. Let's do it. Boop. Step deleted. Only two steps versus three. That is the process in the IP that Tesla has that other companies do not. You can act like companies have it, but according to Sandy Monroe, according to massive amounts of people who worked in the industry in manufacturing for OEMs, they have even said, you know what? It takes industry years to decide if they're going to change. And even after the year, then they decide still not to do it, even if they know the process could be more effective and efficient. Sometimes companies are just like fast trains moving down the tracks. It's it's not easy to slow it down and change course. Just keep going. And that's what a lot of companies do, period. So Tesla has this competitive edge. Yes, the products and services like FSD, products like the EV, cars, shout out to the batteries, the mega packs, and et cetera, the infrastructure that's being built in complement to the actual EV car, and also at the end of the day, the humanoid robots and the dojo and the lithium ion refineries. Guys, there's too many systems that are built out, effective and efficient. At this point, Tesla can take any product and start creating it on their factories and make it better than other people make those cars or, the, or that product or service. And that's what they're doing. You guys are not seeing it. And that's because you guys are not touring the factories. You're not watching videos that tour the factory and get a deeper understanding of what Tesla has as a competitive advantage. Or maybe the next company, any company that you're actually investing in for the long term. I can't help you with that short term stuff. Leave that to the witches and the warlocks. Before we continue, if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that like more than both companies combined. According to him, he sees a potential path for Tesla to be worth more than both companies. This was at the time when Apple and Saudi Aramco were the world's two largest companies by market value. Apple was the world's most valuable company, with a market value of $2.34 trillion at the time, and Saudi Aramco, which was benefiting from soaring oil prices, had a market value of $2.1 trillion. The two largest companies in the world were valued at $4.5 trillion. Therefore, Musk was suggesting that Tesla's valuation would reach at least $4.5 trillion. Can I show you something that kind of... No, you can't. Nobody care about you hip hoppity, hip hopping it. ...in the next few years. To trading 360. Talk about 360. See, I can't listen to these guys no more. Like, that's enough. I can't listen to her. She's going to be talking about quarters and months and dates. And so... Is there a possibility that Tesla could become the first $5 trillion company or $10 trillion company? I think that the opportunity is there. <laughs> and it really doesn't come down to the products. And yeah, the products are dope and definitely real world artificial intelligence like FSD will be amazing once people really understand it. And it's just like chat GPT. Guys, that thing been out for a while, okay? And NVIDIA's been making chips. That's nothing new. But people finally correlated and actually have been able to see the value in things like LLMs and programs and applications like ChatGPT. And so after people have seen that value and after they attempted to correlate it to Google, for an example, and then correlated to NVIDIA and NVIDIA also have an AMD right on its coattails, that's great. The chips are important for artificial intelligence, but also it was the software that unlocked the value of those hardware components. So the software really brought people to realize, wow, this is a game changer. Nobody was sitting there, and not the majority guys, not institutional investors, not JP Morgan, not these guys. Nobody was sitting there like, wow, look at this chip. It was, wow, look at ChatGPT, which NVIDIA makes the chips for these LLMs, these training modules. Wow, look at NVIDIA now. And if there was a, a, a way that people could just invest right into open AI, they would have did it. But for the most part, most retails and no. So the next best thing was Google and the next best thing was especially NVIDIA.
And so NVIDIA has received that massive amount of value. Cool. Now, Tesla is a sleeping giant. Because real world AI, guys, at least the way I see it, maybe I might be crazy. But for me to type in, give me 10 speaking points for a video about economics and then type that into a chat GPT and then it gives me back 10 talking points, right? Then cool. But for real world AI, for a car to be driving around, a robot to drive around utilizing vision in a real world way, That's crazy. FSD, at least version 12.3 to me, is like your teenager. Supervised. FSD, just like your children with a permit, needs to be supervised. And so you need to supervise the car, but it's at that level. It's at the level of your teenage kids. Now that's amazing. Because the same mistakes that the FSD perform are mistakes that kids perform. And hence why they need an actual real person with a license to supervise them. So the FSD has not passed the testing driver's license yet. It's just got received this permit, you know? It's still figuring out how to drive. But it's doing a great job as far as you could see on this screen and as far as the people in the field have been making it work. So you guys really need to tune in for FSD in San Francisco and all the other places that people are testing this car out. Like it's doing a great job. And this is the technology that we have. This is the damage that FSD is doing out here on these streets. So I think that there's massive amounts of value in a real world application, real world FSD, because what you're seeing right here, it's not a robot on a laptop giving you 10 talking points for your presentation about bagels and cold cuts and why we should serve coffee instead of water in the morning. What you're looking at is a robot driving in the real world in a real way. Shout out to Dr. Dr. Know-it-all. I drove FSD beta, and this is beta guys, version 12.3, about an hour today, downtown in college doing class changes on and off highways and through odd speed signs. It's not perfect, mostly too whizzy on speed limits, but dang, it's impressive. It definitely passed the spouse test. And then Elon comments back, the tendency to drive too slow should be addressed in version 12.3.1. Come on. This is the ground break. This is artificial intelligence, guys. I don't know how people are not seeing it. For a car to just be driving in the real world and for you not to see that as amazing is beyond me. That is artificial intelligence. That is real world AGI, right? Like the gimmicky apps and stuff, that's cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Google 2.0. Like if I type into Google right now, give me 10 presentation points, it's going to provide me maybe a website where I can get 10 presentation points on economics. 10 economic uh, points for a present, uh, presentation about real estate, right? So this is what happened. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something very interesting. And then also we'll have chat GPT. And so what I'm showing you here is you go to Google, and this is Google 1.0, guys. Google 1.0, 10 pros or 10, 10 benefits for investing in real estate, right? And then here you go. This is the problem. The Google 1.0. Before chat GPT, it gives you five reasons why investing in real estate is a great investment. Then it gives you 19 reasons right here. And then you click on those reasons and then you'll go top 10. 
tenant reason to invest. They're on LinkedIn. This is on here. This is on that, right? So you click on it. Let's go to a website that I can trust. Like, okay, let's go to LinkedIn, right? You go to LinkedIn or if you go to another website and then here's an article of 10 reasons why you can invest appreciation, cash flow, et cetera, right? That's Google 1.0. Chat GPT, the new gimmicky stuff that you guys are going crazy about. Here's the difference. I type in this. I put it in to the new Google, and then it just does this. That's the difference. And there you go. And that's the difference. That's the difference between Google 1.0 and then Chat GPT 3.5, which is basically Google. Just a more direct interface, and it's all in just one interface versus chat gpt giving me a bunch of websites and then i go to those websites and then it has 10 benefits of investing in real estate that's it versus a car out here getting it in the mountains in the snow self-driving that's the artificial intelligence that tesla has driving with no signage Nothing on the roads, driving through the snow. That's what FSD and artificial intelligence is doing on our side. Shout out to Tesla, guys. Thank you for watching this installment. I hope you guys really understand what I was trying to get to you and get you to understand. It's basically, hey, man, look at artificial intelligence when it comes down to Tesla because the real world AGI is very interesting. If you think chat GPT is amazing, then wait until you see what we got cooking up over here. Everyone loves to hate on Tesla. We know that. And guess what? We still grow back better and stronger. Shout out to all the long-term investors on any asset. I see you guys on the next one. We all we got. Let's